Gatsby <clears throat> and this video is going to get you started um, with laying out type uh, specifically for the resume project um, in 273 and in addition to that um, just extra information on uh, creating custom tabs which is required and uh, creating hyperlinks which is required. So um, I am going to talk about the type first and if you look here in this example I've already started I've already put a word mark in place here uh, for myself and um, I have one column of type here which I do encourage you to put all of your copy in one text box it's going to be a lot easier and less time consuming and you're going to have more consistency in the spacing um, so in other words um, I have four sections here I've got my experience my education awards and memberships and skills down here um, now I've already put my type in place but I've left aligned everything um, I have also gone ahead and adjusted the typeface size and style so if you uh, see here I've already like um, adjusted the size and the all cap of the main headers I've got my subheaders uh, medium oblique here um, and I've got my listed items um, situated here as well um, now I don't have any of the line spacing adjusted I'm gonna do that shortly and I don't have custom tabs which is required so I want to show you how to do custom tabs here uh, for the copy now once you have everything laid out I've also looked at my alignments here um, my text box I've got my custom text margins uh, assigned here and I want the edge of my text box to align I guess with this E here and this B of my middle name um, or my maiden name technically um, so what I did was I went over to the ruler and I clicked and dragged a ruled guide from my ruler here and aligned it with those things so I could align my text box with that to create some strong vertical alignments with some other elements on the page um, I encourage you to do that. That's going to create a lot of unity and it's going to really polish your page off um, in creating continuity, leading the eye more easily uh, to all of your visual hierarchy in place. Um, so once you have that text box situated, um, you can select it with your selection tool. And I'm going to go up here to type in my top, top menu and I'm going to go down to tabs and you also have a shortcut It's the up, um, upper arrow key and command T um, probably control T on a PC so when I go to type tabs I get this ruled tab window and it's going to align perfectly with my text box now if I have to move this around and it becomes misaligned you can always go back and there's this little key on the very end of the tab window that looks like a little magnet. If I click that, it's going to snap back to my text box um, and make it aligned once again. Um, but any given moment that you are creating tabs, it will create a vertical ruled line to help you see visually where that tab is going to be. Um, but before I do set a tab, what I want to do is select all the type. Because uh, what I want to do here is I want to create indentions for my um, listed items here. And I have a couple of listed items that are more than one line. Um, like for instance down here with my experience with Earthwatch Institute, this first is four lines that kind of explains uh, my fellowship. So I want these to... Um, be indented uh, to what my listed items are up here but I also want the two specific um, lessons and projects to be indented even more so I'm going to create another tab that goes further in for those and most of these down here are going to stay where they are so it really just relates to my listed items here and how they're vertically aligning so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the type. And the reason I want to select all the type is because if I don't select all the type, it's just going to apply to the line my cursor is on. Um, therefore, I would have to create a tab, custom tabs for every single line separately. So this alleviates that. If I select all the type, <clears throat> now I can come up here to my tab window and create some tabs. And you want to make sure that you're always working in the text box that you have selected. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Um, so this little gray bar above the ruler is where you will click to create tabs. And you've got several that you can highlight up here that show the different types of tab. And if you hover over them, you'll see a little um, window pop up that should tell you what they are. Um, but this is a left align type, which means that all of the left of the copy will align to that tab. Uh, this is center. So if I did center alignment, um, that means that the center of the word would align with that tab. Um, or a line. This is the right, so obviously uh, one might use that if you were doing dates over to the side and you wanted them all right aligned. You could right align those uh, dates. And this one you won't really use. That's like if we were creating a menu and we wanted to align the decimal or value of the, or price of an item, uh, this would align the decimal. Um, so you could have all their numbers aligned properly. But we're going to mo more than likely be using a left align. In this case, I'm using a left align tab. And <clears throat> all I have to do is select what tab, or less, left justified tab, I should say. Um, so anywhere along this gray strip above the ruler is where you can click to create a tab. Now you have these little arrows on each end. Don't You don't have to touch those. Those are your overall margins and we've already set those because we're using our text box um, to align with whatever we need to. So all you have to do is click along this top little strip here. So what I want to do is I'm going to click and make my first indention somewhere around here. Not too far, but enough in to create some contrast from my subheader here. So I'm going to create a tab there. I'm going to create one a little further in, just in case. So I'm going to create a little pattern about every eighth of an inch here. And then I've got one tab that I want to carry even further. So I'm going to carry it for my other items. Not too, too far in, but enough to indent even further. So I've got four tabs here that I can uh, use that will help me. Um, so now, and if you mess up, you can still select one of those tabs and slide it to wherever you would like. Um, also, if you right click or control click, um, you can also get a little menu up and if you want to clear them all, if you're not happy with where you put them, uh, you can clear them or delete the last one. You can repeat in intervals across um, or you can reset your indentions. Um, which is what these are, which I, I don't recommend even touching those. Those make things really confusing. So just use your, just click to create where your tabs are. Now when I click back into the type, um, when I click the tab button, they're going to go to those selected tabs that I set along that bar. Um, and you can always delete this bar um, or the view of it. Your tabs will still be assigned. Um, in case that it's just visually getting in your way. Um, so these are my options here. I don't want to have a lonely widow on the second line, so I'm going to carry that down. Now this is a double line, so I want to indent that just a little further. This is a multiple line, so I'm going to indent it a little further. Sometimes it will try and align itself, so you just have to work with it. And here's where I wanted it to go in further. Okay. 
And I actually want this second line to align with the G here. So I'm going to go back and create a tab for that. So I'm going to select all my uh, type once again. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to select my left align type or uh, left justified tab. And I'm going to create another tab way over here. And notice I'm not aligned with my box, but it's still creating a vertical line where I would have it. So when I click back in here now, I've got that extra tab. So now I can align these and so my dates stand out more. So I'm just going to indent, oops, did not mean to do that. And I'm going to leave my education awards and skills. I'm going to leave those underneath that just as they are. So now I've got some vertical alignments created by custom tabs here. Um, and I, like I said, I can delete this window and still have my tabs assigned. And that looks pretty good. Now I still need to adjust the leading here in my type. So what I would do here is um, I would want, out of all my experience here, I would want to separate each of those experiences. Um, so what I would do in that case is I would think about first, under my main header, that first line of my subheader, I want it to come apart and, and come uh, separate from that just a little bit. So I'm going to take that top line and select it and then go up here to my letting. And I might think of a maybe 15 or 14 there um, to just separate it a little to give it indication that this is the experience section and this is the first item. Um, but then I want a little space between my listed item and that subheader. So I'm going to select the first line there. And this was 14, so I may not want to go that high. So I may go 13 there. And so now I've got a little bit separation. Um, those lines that have second lines to them, I could adjust that and make that a little lower to indicate that that's together. Um, but that's really, I think keeping those, uh, by indenting that, that did, that took care of that, uh, contrast there. Um, but since we have this first line was 13 points, um, then the first line of every experience would be 13 points. That's where we get that consistency. So if you're trying to put everything in separate boxes, you're going to have a real hard time adjusting the consistency there, making your lines and spacing consistent. So now I want to separate each section from one another just a little more. So I have 15 points here. Um, if I see what 15 points looks like there, it's still not quite far enough, so I'm going to go 18 here. And between each section altogether, I've got to decide a consistent spacing. So um, I want those to separate better um, from one another. So I'm going to select each header after experience. Um, I don't have to adjust experience because it's at the very top of that text box. But I'm going to go a little more on this, like maybe 24 maybe. So I'm going to select this header and do the same. I'm going to select this header do the same. So keep that consistent. This first subheader again was 14 points. So I'm going to make this first line 14 points. This first line under the header 14 points. And the same here. 
So that's how you're really going to attain the consistency in your line spacing and your items. Um, so just be aware of that and be mindful of, of that consistency. Like I said, if you choose to do this the hard way and put each section and your headers in separate box, text boxes, you're going to have to use your ruler here to help guide you. You're going to have to pull a lot of ruled lines to help make sure that consistency is there and it's really hard to do and it's very time consuming to do. Um, so if you do your layout of your copy in this way, you're going to save a lot of time and you're going to make things consistent um, and save a lot of frustration also. So either way you do it, um, I'm going to be looking for that consistency and I'm going to be looking for those strong alignments um, and custom tabs and all of that. So um, just be mindful. I'm trying to uh, give you the most efficient um, practical way of going about this work. Um, so, I'm just going to reduce or make that line a little more too. So that's really <clears throat> all there is to custom tabs. Now I've got my items here. Now I can put glyphs in front of that. Um, instead of just using the bullet setting in your paragraph window, that creates an extra gap between the bullet and your copy. So what I like to do is use your glyph window. Um, so let me see. I don't even think that. There it is. So your glyphs are basically every um, every part of your typeface. So everything that goes along with this typeface here, I can. Uh, Look at the punctuation, numbers, currency, symbols, anything that goes along with that. Um, the ones I've used recently are up here in this bar. And under punctuation, you can scroll and it will give you all types of punctuation here. Um, oops, I didn't do that. So for instance, if I wanted to use this dot here, I could put that, double click on it, and it goes up in my recently used. And it puts it at the beginning of the line. It just adds a character there. But what I want to do is give a little space after that. So I could do one or two spaces. Um, that would work just fine. So what I like to do to make things easy when I do this, this way, or use a glyph, is I'll select those two spaces and the glyph itself and copy it. Command or Control C, and then go to each line of where my listed items are, and there you have it. So if you want to add in bullets for that, then you can do that as well. Make those indent just a little bit more. I could put one there just to keep things consistent. And then just move everything over just in here. So if I added bullets, you could see what that looks like. Um, so I could try it both ways and do a printout or just test a PDF. Um, and so for when we get ready for your drafts to be due, uh, you'll want to um, print several versions of your layout. In this case, I could print a version without the bullets and then export a sample PDF um, of the document with the bullets and print that out. Um, I could try putting my word mark on the right side instead of the left um, and create a version like that and print that out. So you won't really see for sure um, all of the desirable effects of your work until you really see it printed out. So um, when those drafts are due, your digital drafts will be completed um, and you'll be ready to print some versions of it. So you would, in order to do that, you would keep the sig a singular file, um, but every time you change something up, you could export a sample PDF um, of that. So you could just go to File, Export, and just do a sample PDF um, print PDF in this case, and uh, decide and print, you know, several versions. I uh, usually require at least three um, 
previous versions of what you are studying when you're picking out final finalized looks to your resume. Um, and, you know, for the online section, you would just submit digital drafts, but you still want to print things out as you're creating drafts to test all of this. You will still have to turn in hard copies of drafts in your uh, envelope that has to be sent um, by the due date. So just be aware of that. Now with custom t uh, hyperlinks here, um, I'm going to create hyperlinks for my three email addresses and my website here. Um, and if you have a LinkedIn, we would include that, which I have a LinkedIn, but I, and I can write that in down here. And we'll just bump everything up. So I would just write the word LinkedIn and then make that a hyperlink. And in this case, I'm going to bump this up just a hair. I want there to be a little room here between my name and experience, but I also want there to be a little more room at the bottom than there is at the top. Now I'm ready to uh, create my hyperlink here. Now you also have a hyperlink window. It's not the same as the links window. It's um, going to have a little globe with a finger here, and that's hyperlinks. If you don't see that, you can go up to window in the very top menu and go down to interactive, and your hyperlink window will be there. Um, so you can hyperlink almost anything. Um, graphics, words, um, websites, files, URLs, emails, whatever. Um, so only thing that you have to do is just type it out. Um, we're going to select the type that we want to hyperlink. So I'm going to select my email address here. I'm going to go to my hyperlink window. And you can either go to the hamburger stack up here in the top right and create a new hyperlink or you can go just like your layer window and all your other windows where you can start something new uh, you have your little icon at the bottom here to create a new hyperlink so when we do that it's going to come up with a window and this is where you can select what type of hyperlink it is in this case it's an email so I'm going to select email and it's automatically going to put my address in the address line you can even go so far as to type in the subject line. Um, so um, if some were to, someone were to click on your email, it would automatically come up to write you an email, and it automatically would have the subject line filled out. Now it's automatically going to give you blue and underlining like any typical hyperlink here. So you can see it added it to my list here and if I click back in my box it's turned blue with an underline. Now since we're not allowed to use color for the resume project I'm going to change this to a 75 percent gray so that that's still noticeable as a link but it's not blue. And I'm going to do the same for these two email addresses. So there, I've got email, there's my email, I'm going to click OK, and you can see it'll show a little envelope in your hyperlink window when it's an email address. Same for this one, and I'm going to select, just go ahead and select both of these lines and change them to 75% gray. Okay. Now I've got a URL here, so which is you definitely want to copy the URL. So in this case I have my own domain. So I'm going to select this and Command C or Control C. And I'm going to select, go back to my document, I'm going to select my email address, or not email address, I'm sorry, my website address. And I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to go in here and select to create a new URL. Now in this case, I'm going to select URL on the link to section. 
and it's going to put my email, I mean, not my email, I'm sorry, my website in this URL spot. And the shared hyperlink destination, all this does is it also puts it in a list up here. So if I were putting another hyperlink somewhere else in a document, um, I could just go up here and select that again. So I'm going to click OK. I've got my, you do have some settings here, but I really don't really touch those. So you can see when I go into my hyperlink window, you can see a little green dot here. That means it is active and it is working. Now I will warn you in LinkedIn, sometimes it will turn red here like it's not working. Um, so make sure it's kind of picky and finicky about hyperlinks. So um, just be aware of that. Don't get discouraged or get alarmed if you see that. I'm going to change this, 75% gray. Now I want to go here to LinkedIn, which I may not even, yes. So I'm not signed in at the moment. So for your LinkedIn, you would do the same thing. You would go in and you would type in or select the word, go in and start your hyperlink. And in this case, you would have the URL of your LinkedIn homepage, your individual homepage. Um, so just make sure that's in the URL. And then I'm just going to put the homepage here since that's, uh, I don't, I'm not signed in at the moment on my computer. Um, so I would just put your home address for your individual page and then click OK. Um, and it should give you um, a hyperlink to the individual home page. Now this says it is working, so um, that would be just to the home page right now. And I'm also going to change that to the gray. I thought I did. There we go. No? Did that not turn gray? Strange. Okay. Well, maybe I'll select it that way. There we go. So if ever you're selecting just a single word and it doesn't want to change, um, sometimes that happens when you're doing the line spacing or the letting. Um, so you have to go to the previous line, the end of it, and select it and the line. If it doesn't want to work. Okay. So let's say I've got my hyperlink. So let's say I want to test those. You can't really test them in InDesign, so I would have to command E or export um, a sample PDF. One and interactive. So this isn't a print, I mean you can print from your interactive PDF, but you have two types of, inter, uh, of PDFs here. And what you want for your project in your packaged folder is your interactive PDF. So when you package, it automatically packages a print PDF. So you're going to have to go back and change it. So I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So right now we're just testing our PDF to make sure it works. So we're just going to put it in our folder or on our desktop and I'm going to export. And it's probably going to pull it up by default. So I'm going to scan down here to the bottom and click so this is going into LinkedIn, just like I had on my home page. Here's my website. So now it's, you know, so my hyperlinks are working. It's probably going to automatically use e, uh, mail for, which I don't really use as a default. So, but it will go and create an email for all of those. So you want an interactive PDF for also being able to distribute your PDF to potential employers. Um, but let's say you're finished with your resume, you, got, you have everything like you want it. You're going to save it 
as and make sure that it's the same file name. You're going to make sure it's saved um, as an updated copy. So I would save this and put it to your desktop first. And then when we package this, we would package Keep all your file names consistent. Now, see down here, it's going to include your print PDF. We're going to go ahead and package as it is. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stay, go back to my document here, and I'm going to re-export, Command-E or Control-E. And it's still got my same file name here, so I've kept that consistent. Now I'm going to change this to interactive, and I'm going to put this in or on my desktop because all I'm going to do is replace my old one with it. So I'm going to save this and let me minimize for a second. So here I've got my package folder. Here I've got my interactive PDF that I just saved. I'm going to click and drag it over and replace my other one with it. So this is basically replacing my print PDF with my interactive. So now when I go into my package folder, I can test that PDF and make sure it's interactive. So it is. Everything's working. So I want to make sure that everyone knows to do that and not forget that step because if I test your PDF and it's not inter interactive, then there will be a deduction for that. <clears throat> so make sure you replace your PDF, your print one, with your interactive one in your package folder at the end of the digital files. Okay, so that explains you know some important things about type about versioning and your drafts, um, also about custom tabs and creating strong alignments there, um, and also aligning with other elements on the page, and in addition to that, creating hyperlinks um, for your resume. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, thanks for listening, and good luck as you progress to your final product.